they coming through and getting heavy. It's time to talk some dynasty and talk some Debbie. My guys is never short. Time to sit down to let the DJs cook. Ow! Welcome back to Debbie DGENS. I am your host, Nino Brown, and I am uh, joined today by a very special guest, Travis May. How are we doing this afternoon, this evening? And I know you're a very busy man, so I appreciate your time. <laughs> hey, glad to uh, hop on and talk some uh, college players and whatever else we want to jump into. But yeah, it's, it's just kind of middle of draft season. And so, you know, it's just uh, the grind this time of year. We got NFL free agency, like kicking off all the tampering period, like tomorrow <laughs> as of this recording. So there's lots of fun stuff ahead but uh yeah glad to just dive in here with you yeah i appreciate you coming on i know you're a super busy guy you know you've been doing a bunch of pods out there but uh before uh, we hop into it wh where can they find your work and what's your tag sure uh for those unfamiliar you can find me at uh ff underscore travis m on x or twitter uh, twitter or whatever we're calling it and then uh, you can find me <laughs> at a 2 zsportscom oh, basically all my written work is going to be there and i still do the college to canton podcast with my buddy stefan leco so yeah wherever you can find podcasts but yeah all right travis you ready to, to get into the rapid fire oh let's do it man let's jump right in all right uh, arizona state qb Jaden rashada will be qb1 for the sun devils entering week one of the 24 season absolutely i got I, he was he, he i don't know he just kind of went off like his first game last year uh, things didn't go exactly how you planned, you know. He, he got dinged up and missed a lot of time here, but uh, it's his program moving forward. So I think they're going to give him the reins and just uh, take over. And I think he's going to succeed. I, I hope so because I, I I had uh, a lot of hopes for Shada coming out, and then you know after the injury, it was kind of like eh, yeah, back and forth. You didn't know what was going to go on, but yeah. hopefully uh, this year is the breakout year. Yeah. Boise State QB Malachi Nelson will put up blank yards and blank touchdowns for the Broncos this season? Hmm. Uh, 3,700 yards. Ooh. And, you know, 38 touchdowns. How about that? Ooh, I, I love it. Those are spicy numbers. Off. Yeah. Go off, man. Like, because they need him to. And one, they've got a whole lot of other weapons in terms of, like, mm -hmm. on the ground to kind of really uh, open things up for him. And so, I, I really, I'm super high on Boise State. I think there's... I mean, what they did with just patchwork nothing at the at the quarterback position down the stretch yeah. last year, uh, versus you know a five star kind of talent, big difference. Yeah, I think they're on their third quarterback in that bowl game because Madison was was uh, injured as well. So yeah, like they just patched it together and still got it done. Yeah, um, unreal. Ohio State QB Devin Brown will be QB one for the Buckeyes this season. No, that's not going to be a thing. Uh, <laughs> it, it's cool. It's respectful that he is opening spring practices as the the first reps kind of guy i mean he's been there he stuck stuck it out that's great but uh when it's all said and done it's going to be will howard okay that's what i expected as well um yeah. duke qb malik murphy will lead the blue devils to a nine plus win season absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> elko is gone man and uh you know a few other veterans are, are gone as well malik murphy uh, the hype train was real last, I guess, spring. Yep. Um, and, you know, he was still like the QB2 for Texas. It didn't look great when he had limited action last year. I think he has all the tools to be fine, uh, good even. But to overcome what has largely still been a really bad Duke team outside of a few Elko years, no, not, not, not happening. All right, we can put that all to bed. ECU quarterback Caden uh, Hauser will break out for the Pirates in the 24th season. I think so. Like Hauser, like the competition he's going to be playing against against uh, at ECU now, like th that version of the AAC is not even what it was a few years ago. <laughs> right. Hauser, it's going to be worse than the competition he was playing in high school. Like Hauser played at St. John Bosco out in California, right. which is like a top ten mm -hmm. high school program in the country, um, and and he was very very good that, at that level yes. of play. Goes to Michigan State, he doesn't really get given the job. Um, and now he's definitely not going to, with the of course having transferred out and would not anyway had he right. chosen to stay because Aiden Childs is coming in. But yeah, I think he'll, I think he could actually surprise and be a really productive college quarterback. I think a lot of people for, kind of forgot about him and how good he was coming out of high school and Bosco. Mm -hmm. And you know, he 
had a couple of games, just struggled a little bit last season. I think this could be a spot for him to just, you know, where the sky's the limit for him. Uh, give me your sleeper, Davey O'Brien, finalist. Mm. Let's see. Davey O'Brien, finalist, sleepers. Like, how deep we want to go? No, no, <laughs> hey, you can go as deep as you'd like. like. I mean, we got the obvious guys. You're going to say, you know, Gabriel, Shador, like, like those guys. But, like... Who, a name that not many people probably throwing in in the hat like the top five. Some some guy out of the top five that you really like. <laughs> it's it, this is it's funny like, but just because of okay, just bear with me here. I, I don't know what the I live odds are here, but DJ Uyangule. Ooh, all right. At, at Florida State, uh, he's Hakeem Williams is is still there, like five star absolute monster, uh, who might be better than. Uh, that's uh, yeah, it might be better than Keon Coleman, it might be better than Johnny Wilson, and a few other guys that, that should, you know, go off for them this year. And Norvell loves his quarterbacks and, and they can be super productive. And so I think DJU is gonna put up a bunch of stats. I know he's in a, on his third school and right post post hype <laughs> sleeper status, but you know, coming off of an undefeated season, that program has completely turned around. Yes. And uh, they're they're going to be they're going to be a lot of pieces still around him to succeed. Long shot, long shot for sure. But that's one that I think many people are forgetting. Oh yeah, he's in Florida State now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and a lot of people just thinking that that thirteen and zero was just a fluke. I don't believe it is. I think, like you said, the program is turned around. Hey, when we're hearing Malik Benson looks good, he looks like he's a leader yeah. out there for that program. Finally, you know what, Bama the JUCO guy, and he's been a guy. Yeah. So. If He's got him, speed. He's got yes. speed. He wasn't, you know, the volume guy at Bama, but no, they need that. So yeah, and and I love Williams. I think I was hoping last year he'd get a little bit more, but you know, with Coleman coming in, it kind of took away the chances of him getting some more reps. But I think uh, Hakeem is going to be a guy for them this year. Yeah, same. All right, last rapid five before we we get into the body of the show. Keep trade cut. No Fafita, oh, Byron Brown, Caden Salta. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay, okay. I think I I'm gonna keep Noah Fapita. I'm gonna cut Byron Brown. And I'm gonna trade Caden Salter because Caden Salter's efficiency was bonkers last year. Like the number one efficiency numbers across the board for for quarterbacks. But really, that's Chadwell's done this before. Like J- Jimmy yeah. Chadwell's offenses just do that. They put up bonkers numbers, and so I'm not sure in terms of like making it to the next level that um Salter has that going on but Fafita he's super short and I get it but at the same time among the you know early like 2025 20, eligibles like early declare types um like in the class of Drew Drew Aller and right. Kate Club Nick all that he Noah Fafita had the best season last year uh, by the advanced metrics that mean something uh so yeah really impressed by him and he's going to have some of the best weapons in the country with, with yeah. the so yeah sign me up no no fupito man that's yeah, it he's got his boy uh T Mac who's been his high school like a teammate right yeah Since freshman year um yeah. I love T Mac come in I always said he was gonna be a guy and people kind of like ah maybe maybe not he's proven dude, himself he's, he's been it he's yes. been that dude like he's There's like only... what worst like at worst probably like wide receiver two or three I would and say three because burden and Stewart is kind of maybe but yeah. I guess yeah, at worst three, but like he's a first round wide receiver for 2025. So he's got some crazy good weapons. Mm-hmm. Uh the, the sky's the limit. And and I think the system that he's in is not artificially cooking his numbers either. No, right. Yeah, exactly. And I think they just brought in the back with it. It was a uh Crosskit that came in from New Mexico or something, running back to replace yeah, the yeah. there's a pretty some, good back. Yeah, they, they they've got some great back. Actually, you have some decent backs. Yeah, uh decent running backs there. So some fun, fun weapons. I know you know you lost uh, Cowling, you lost uh, Tanner McLaughlin, but right. still some some weapons to to target. It'll be interesting. I, I like Rafita there. Uh, Salton Brown. I, I think Brown. Brown's got super potential, but like you said, I, I'm with you. You know, Salta, you're gonna get your most value out of him right now because yeah. he kind of just went off. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's uh, before we get into the actual body of the show, Jack Snoddle, Nico, um, I'm Avila. Let, let, let's talk about um, your process and how you evaluate quarterbacks. Yeah, so that's tough because uh, early on, like, 
Oh, like first year quarterbacks, even top five star guys, oftentimes the first look at these guys is pretty rough. Right. In many cases, if they're like thrown out on the field as a true freshman, it's not perfect. I mean, like look at Dante Moore last year. He just clearly got the yips and was benched. And now he's like gonna, you know, he's not even gonna start this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it can happen, but that doesn't mean that the potential is all gone, right? So right. typically analytically and from a film perspective. Uh, in terms of projecting to the pros, like I'm trying to look at the, the peaks to their career. I, I want to see that that development and, and growth over the years, like we saw out of Jaden Daniels like crazy. But the mm-hmm. peak is what matters more than like what he was doing back in 2019, tossing balls to Brandon Ayuk. You know, so like I understand that like, the people want to look at that and so hey, he wasn't even very good, you know, all these years ago. I'm like, well, yeah, he wasn't very good. He was thrown out onto the field at, like age 18, and he's not going to be good right away. Right. But it's really special that he was on the field at all. And so I think um, taking these few first couple of years w- with a grain of salt and understanding this is not the finished product, but also not automatically if they are just like thrown into the field and they find success and Hey, most key metrics are like 80, 80th, 85th percentile and even 90th percentile, whatever right away that that means they're going to be drafted either because we've seen guys flame out like Spencer Rattler. We've like Sam Howell uh, that it didn't actually work out in the way that we wanted them to. Similar to wide receiver, like if you have that true freshman breakout, fantastic. You probably locked in like day two-ish capital, or at least like round four or five capital at, at worst, especially at wide receiver, but in, in, even at quarterback. Right. Um, like a worst case scenario, we're talking about like Sam and Howell kind of arc. But still, uh, even so, uh, that doesn't mean you're going to hit. So taking it slow with these first couple of years, uh, but really placing a, an emphasis on the peak um, more so than uh any kind of valleys but you know from from a film analytics a film uh analyst standpoint yes you want to see the footwork yes yes you want to see him operate within a scheme that's that um is not artificially inflating everything and sometimes it's tough because sometimes it's like tennessee's offense <laughs> uh and sometimes it's it, like last year with bo Nix's offense a lot of underneath stuff lots of screens right. But um, you have to isolate the plays that kind of translate to the next level from a film standpoint and go, okay, that intermediate backside that he hit, that absolutely, um, that's a tough read. That, that's like a second, third read, though. That's like two, that's two and a half, three seconds in. He had to wait knowing pressure was coming. Yeah. Uh, that, that kind of stuff that, that translates from a film standpoint um, and kind of isolate that from a lot of the just <laughs> juice schematic free production that a lot of offenses in college are, are good at. But from an analytic standpoint, I kind of do the same thing. Like I actually filter out a lot of that stuff, not filter out, but adjust for things like pre-snap motion, play action percentage, average step to target, things that can manipulate or artificially inflate a quarterback's um, efficiency profile. Uh, so I have a metric I create called scheme adjusted pass efficiency that adjusts for those things to give us a, a better look at um, kind of like an even even playing field adjusting for key metrics that, that artificially boost in, in uh, efficiency. Um, it, try to lo- it tries to level the playing field and then pumps out a percentile score for efficiency rating. And so um, if you you know use film analysis and you use kind of like a level playing field efficiency model, you can get a pretty good idea of what a, a quarterback's going to be then at the next level. Yeah. Um, and then if you throw in some, some evaluation for, you know, baseline mobility stats, because, Otherwise, you're Mac Jones. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> um, that that's important too because uh, mobility stats um, and thresholds recently have have shown to be super strong in signal. So, it's kind of three pronged. It's it's a film film based analysis that that kind of adjusts for scheme as much as you can, level of competition if you can, and analytics numbers that do the same. Uh, it's, that's harder to do, uh, but but it, it is possible. Like Sports Info Solutions is a great resource. Pro Football Focus is a great resource to kind of sift through the the data in the right way to get the right information at hand, uh, and then some mobility and kind of uh, sack stats and things like that. That uh, not just pressure to sack, like not just pressure to sack stuff, but that's probably a lot. But I, I try to break it down as, as detailed as I can through through you know film analytics and mobility, which is kind of grouped in with analytics as well. I know you say it's a lot, but it, it's a way that you actually fine tune the process instead of just being in that mediocre bucket of like the same five, six stats, you know, that everybody, or, yeah. or you know, 
percentiles that everybody's going with. You're going deeper down, you know, down the rabbit hole there, which is giving yeah. you a, a clear cut picture in the end of, of, of what you like to see. So, yeah, uh, I, I love it. I mean, a lot of people won't understand it off the rip, but as you <laughs> as you go through it and you actually dive into the process and you start to you know break things down more, you get more a, a respect and, and, and appreciation for it. Yeah, and I and I try to, and, and yeah, the, the scheme adjusted passive efficiency. I don't assume that everyone's just going. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm glad to talk that through, and I, you know, just over the years, I've been trying to get better at uh, just communicating clearly. You know, like hey, play, play action has been known to artificially inflate inflate efficient like efficiency, and so adjusting for that, you know, like there's their baseline at expectations of like what an offense in college runs like most offenses in college run about 30 percent of the time they, they have play action involved in a, in a pass so if you know if somebody has 55 percent of their play calls in, in include play action uh and then you layer in the fact that they also you know run some sort of pre-snap motion mm -hmm. on 60 percent of their plays <laughs> um you know like there there are key variables like that that can if you kind of adjust and and, and scale for that you can kind of get a better idea of like, hey, how much of this is real versus how much of this is boosted by the scheme that they're within. Right. Are they living in the bubble or can they live outside the bubble and still have success? Yeah. All right. Well, I think that was a good way to talk about the QBs as we break into to the body um, of the show, which will be Nico Imaliva versus Jackson Arnold. Um, heading into the 2024 season, two of the top four ranked QBs of the 23 class will be in the prime position, pretty much take over their teams. Um, Nico and Jackson, Arnold, how do you have these plays graded before the 2023 season? And what are some similarities and differences between both of these QBs? Yeah, so probably two out of the top three for me last year. It was like Dante Moore and Nico and Jackson Arnold. It was kind of those three, I think, for me at the top um, in my rankings for the quarterback class, that recruiting class. So I really was high on all of them. I was really pumped that Dante got an opportunity. We're going to have to wait a bit on him. But uh, Nico uh, looks like he's every bit worth, you know, the $8, $8 million <laughs> that he was <laughs> allegedly uh, promised. And I guess they could come out with the real numbers now since the uh, the injunction has been placed upon things. And so now the NCAA can't even enforce their actual uh, NIL rules. But, um, yeah, he looks like the real deal. Against Iowa, who's no slouch on defense. Correct. Like, having four touchdowns was incredible he didn't have massive production but pretty efficient you know like 63 64 percent completion rate and um you know had one passing touchdown three three rushing touchdowns right. it wasn't like crazy rushing yards either but he was just an incredibly efficient uh quarterback that day he was exactly what they needed him to be and that was his very first start mm -hmm. so um i really i i think he would have been a better starter than joe milton was thank uh, you for tennessee <laughs> all last year uh, and I think they would have had a much better record uh, had he had he been in the lineup. I think they could have really pushed a few teams they shouldn't have. Um, even Georgia, to be honest, like last year, they, they would have been in a better spot with him because his arm talent is, is – Joe Milton's arm talent is fantastic in terms of just raw chuck at 90 yards. But like yeah. Nico already does things that you shouldn't really be able to. Like even dating back to the, the spring game and like the spot work – um, he can pass the touch, but he's got the arm strength and he's got really fantastic mobility and, and decision making. Just really loved what I, I saw out of him. And being in the scheme that he is in, he's going to put up stupid, like stupid video game, game kind of numbers. And, yes. Um, like and having Squirrel White uh, back in the mix again. Like I, th I think people under uh, underestimate how good of a year Squirrel White actually had down the stretch. Mm -hmm. Like kind of was spotty earlier in the year, but I believe he started. Finished really strong. Still one of the best deep threats in the game. Um, and so he's going to be all, you know, he's going to be getting that, that free release nonsense out yeah. of the slot. Uh, like just nonstop. Pep it. Pep <laughs> and so, it. <laughs> yeah, he, they're going to connect for some just silly looking numbers. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I really like him. But when comparing him to Jackson Arnold, Jackson Arnold, I feel, I feel like fits more of like a prototypical pro style type player. Like, I mean, they were running like what it, what seemed to like when I was watching him, his stuff, even like in Texas in high school, some of like he was good enough that his games were getting televised in high school. Yeah. And so, um, like, it was, it wasn't necessarily like pro style system, but it felt more 
like what my eyes are used to when I'm watching like a pro game. Yeah. And it's and he was like doing this at age 17. I'm like, okay, this is kind of this is kind of crazy. Yes, uh, the, the limited action that he, that we saw last year was spotty at best. Like the, the the game against Arizona, he threw like three interceptions. Yeah, uh, which is not <laughs> not what you want to see. But he also threw. Yeah, I mean, he also put up like 400 total yards of offense. Right. Um, so I, I'm excited to see how that goes because they do bring back. Uh, Nick Anderson, they just brought in, uh, well, stole uh, from my alma mater, Purdue. I believe they brought in uh, Dion uh, Burks. Yep. And they uh, have so, Farouk still. Yeah, Farouk. Farouk's still there. And, and Farouk, I don't think people understand because, like, they don't always use him. They use him on, like, a lot of horizontal stuff and, like, end rounds and creative things. I don't think people understand. He's, he had, like, sub 4-4 four, four kind of speed out of high school. Yes. So yeah. he's – uh. They've got the size with Han- Anderson. They've got the speed with Fruit. They've got the versatility with Burks. He's got a really fun weapon set this they year. They have that so. freshman, right? That is it, Devon Mitchell, the the tight end, who's like an absolute yeah. freak of nature. Like, yeah, and they've and really even beyond that, they've got, they've got some really fun like field stretching guys. Right, I believe uh, Brennan Thompson's. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he's still there too. So like they they've got a really where it was an issue, or at least it seemed it was an issue uh, a year ago. Um, they have their wide receivers, they have a lot better depth yeah. this year. So with, with patch catching backs, right? We you have Sawchuck who can we've seen can catch yeah. the ball in the backfield, and he's added some weight apparently. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see just that offense as a whole. And uh, when you're like booting a top five efficiency passer out the door to hand the keys to a quarterback like uh, Jackson Arnold, like that's yeah. that's wild. Yeah, <laughs> but Gabriel guess, couldn't wait, and he, he was out <laughs> as fast as. It's yeah, I mean, Dylan Gabriel had like legit top five numbers in the country yes. last year. Yes, he's not a big prototypical, like, you know, super confident pro projection. But for college, what he does is beautiful. I mean, he's got like 48 starts, too. So to yeah. boot a guy who, if he stays healthy and Oregon makes the playoff, he could break Bo Nix's record for all time career starts and yards and touchdowns, and touchdowns. Yeah. this year. It's crazy. Um, and it's they're a- like, nah, we don't need that guy because we got Jackson Arnold. Like that's, yes, that's un- freaking believable, you know? Yeah. So um uh I, I I'm I'm confidence I think, is unreal. I think both of these guys, yeah, both of these guys have a swagger and confidence that, that is unmatched, right? They just they they believe in themselves, they believe that they're the guy. Um but now and the program going, clearly is all, all, all in in both cases. Both. Yes, yeah. uh, uh, absolutely. I, I, they brought in Nico. They brought him in last year um, to the bowl game to practice as an early enrollee to kind of push the fire on the Milton's, you know, butt. And it, it didn't really do much for Joe anyway. But no, you know, he's he's still he, Joe Milton. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, you know, which QB, and we kind of touched on a little bit, is in the better system to succeed day one. You know, is it Nico and Heupel's very, very, very QB friendly um, Tennessee Vol system, or now with Jackson Arnold and Seth Littoral's offensive system, and will the departure yeah. of Jeff Levy affect J- Jackson Arnold early on? I think because of the system that he's in, I think there's a great chance that um, Nico just finds like more immediate success right away. But I think we're gonna have to be able to find out which one might be better. I think it was like, like week four yes. where they actually yes. play each other. Uh, I know that's like at Oklahoma, so it's not very fair. But um, Nico gets to play UTC, like UT Chattanooga, yeah. right out of the gate, and NC State, which is I, I do think that they'll be okay for ACC standards. Um, but he should still do really well against them. And then Kent State, which might be like a bottom five program in the country. <laughs> Um, so like he's just going to get a really fun, nice runway, I think this year and a scheme that benefits him greatly. Oh yeah. Uh, so I think he might have the, the, the crazier numbers out of the gate this year. Uh, but both of them, I think still project really well, uh, to the pro level. I think, you know, in the short term for college fantasy stuff, probably Nico. Um, but still the, the, the tools are wild for both. And so big fan. Uh, I'm a big fan. Nico's been my one for, since before the season last year started. Um, unfortunately, my co-host on my other shows uh, a sooner guy, so I've been hearing about Jackson Arnold, and we've been going back and forth <laughs> sure. Uh, sure for yeah. months, you know. So, but I mean, he kind of can't go wrong with either one of them, I guess. At this point, um, we'll have to see in the end. But now we're talking a little bit of Devi and value for these two players, right? And like I said, the you know, top 
two QBs to have in this class, but maybe outside of this class, maybe be the 24, 25, or, or beyond class. Would you move any one of these guys for maybe, say, Lagway or Dylan Raiola out, out of the next class? Or would maybe the class after that and Bryce Underwood or Julian Lewis? Are there guys that you think would have better value than either one of these gentlemen? And if you were to move on, what would be your asking price? I think if you're moving on or any of the guys that uh, – or even this year, you probably do want some some kind of smaller plus added value on them. Because one, in terms of making it to the pros, you're going to be waiting most likely. Most likely. Yeah. Anymore, we see guys stick around. But the ones that are like really special <laughs> – Yes. Like all the ones that we, you would probably three, be pivoting them. Yeah. They're going to, they're still going to be three and gone because the, yeah. the guaranteed money is still going to be <laughs> exactly insanity. Um, and plus actually by the time that these guys wrap up their careers, we're probably actually going to have employment status and the money's actually going to be less um, than, it, than it is right now uh, in just a matter of like two, three years. So I'm not sure we're going to see that the, the same kind of, unregulated unregulated nonsense and madness uh, which has been great for the players but it's just going to be different i think very soon so yeah. uh with that said i think you you do still need a plus even for uh dylan rayola because i i do think he you know he does fine probably pretty well actually for, for nebraska because they have to have him be that <laughs> yeah um, hennenberg um, or whatever his name is i don't yeah, think that is heinrich be yeah no yeah. no he's not he's not that guy so rail is gonna start right away and lagway um, he's going to get the job sooner than later. Uh, and, uh, I mean, just, let's just be real. Yeah. Uh, Graham Mertz is, is into him, you know? Yeah. He's not, <laughs> no, he's not, he's not all caps him. No. And so <laughs> he's just not right. So no, he's not. and, and Napier needs something it's, to happen. Yes. If, if he got, if he does hit chalk, which is like what, five and a half, whatever this, he's, he's, gone. he's gone. So yeah. he's, he, there's a great chance we see lagway this year too um at some point to save the season and save napier's job <laughs> yes <laughs> but, i agree yeah so i there's a great chance we see a lot of that right now but you need a pretty significant crazy significant actually plus um uh, if you're adding you, you know looking to trade into like bryce underwood Ju uh, julian lewis or you know george mcintyre even though i'm high on that entire trio that's coming in in the 2025 recruiting class which is that somehow a, a real year that's less than a year away from now it's crazy but, yeah <laughs> it is but um I, I do like all of them bryce underwood does look he looks really freaking good uh <laughs> um, but with that said you're, you're gonna get these guys in line to start right now for a, like blue both of them both of them really like blue blood kind of recruiting right top, I don't, you know, people that haven't been watching very long might not think that about Tennessee, but like they've been a top 15 ish consistent recruiting monster for forever, too. So, really in, in great shape to uh, win now, contribute now, produce now, and lock in some likely projected early draft capital for two years from now. Uh, so whereas, hold, hold these guys unless you're getting the farm. Yeah, because like you're going to need rail a plus quite a bit because you're, you're waiting another year for Debbie even with rail or anybody. Right. So yeah, it, it, it's just w with the time factor and really, frankly, yes, quarterbacks can hit anywhere and they do, but rail is, he's got an uphill battle to climb just by being at Nebraska. Frankly, I, um, I agree. Even if they have some weapons there, it doesn't matter. Like it's that not program, Oklahoma. it's not no, Tennessee. Yeah. No, they, they could definitely ruin him. Easily, so hundred percent. Thank you for putting that in the um, realm uh, in this community because for some reason I feel like everybody's bought in that he is the next guy. Yeah, and he might be. Um, and he lo he loves the off platform nonsense throws that yes, like he does. He doesn't actually have footwork. Like he actually just kind of he just kind of floats around and like, <laughs> hey, if there's a way that I can throw this off of one foot, let me do that. Oh, yeah. You know, um, and that's that's one thing. I'm in leagues like war drafts and players just like we should be on lists probably, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, it's, it's yeah. like, so you're watching, if you're into football recruiting, you see the highlight reels like two years ago, Rayola was like just leaping and, and jumping oh, and, yeah. and doing flips to, before he throws the ball, you know, not, not really, but it's just like, what do you, what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, and so they're, you know, even though he is rated as highly as he is, nobody's perfect coming in 
No. Um, and so for him to be thrusted into the situation where he has to be the guy right away, man. Uh, don't yeah. fail. Don't fail out the gate because with yeah. you know with everything coming behind it, you know, I, and I don't mean to put any heat on the kid, but like a lot of the commitment issues, three three high schools, three three commitments, different colleges. That's all going to be weight. And, and these people nowadays in, in social media and in journalism, they are not, they're not taking it easy on you. So if you come no. out the gate in these first two games and you are, you know, having growing pains, they are going to be all over them. Can he handle yeah. that? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure. So I think that's why even in his case where, where the hype is real and Lagway's case where the hype is real, um, I'd still prefer a, a pretty nice chunk uh, if, I, if I'm going to move off of um, Nico. Yeah. Or Jackson Arnold. All right. Now I'm gonna throw out one kind of scenario here before we close it out. Ian Debbie and someone offers, you know, Jeremiah Smith and say Avery Johnson from Kansas State. Oh one God. of these guys in a package. What, <laughs> what, what, what are you thinking about that? Like is, is, is a guy like Jeremiah Smith something that's like uh, a move a guy that would start the process of like maybe we can we can get this conversation rolling? Absolutely. And that's and I normally wouldn't say that to be the to be the case for like a true freshman wide receiver, even if they, even if they ever are a uh high pedigree guy. But Jeremiah Smith has kind of been like for the last couple of years, like, okay, yeah, that's that, that's absolutely Julio Jones. Like, yeah, it's just like, it's, yeah. Like that's absolutely the like we were waiting on on like this dude to just come in and just be a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. Um and like <laughs> you know, this is probably overselling it. That's fine. I don't care. Like <laughs> Jeremiah Smith, uh, Jeremiah Smith is not real. Like it's just not. <laughs> it's like it's made not up. real. So, yeah. uh, yes, if you mix in the ridiculous upside of Avery, Avery Johnson and his mobility and his athletic profile, and uh, he's going to be given the keys to that offense. Oh for, yeah. And so, uh, I'm really high on him to actually lead Kansas State to win the Big Twelve this year. Okay. Uh, actually, over. Uh, Utah, just because I'm not sure that they have an answer for somebody like Avery Johnson. If he actually does take one more step in terms of de- developing as a passer, yes, he could be just indefensible. Like in college, like he could, he he could just break college football in a way that like his all his ratings are like 99 for the video game next year because like his mobility, like you know, speed, Super everything. Mobility, yeah, yeah. And, and, speed. So, and he has Giddens with him in a backfield that's already going to make yeah. it like they're going to help each other with yeah. lanes and, and and making guys just have to commit without needing to, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think, yeah, if he can develop like accuracy to the deep ball. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't think a lot of people really watch Kansas state that no. closely, but if you did yeah, uh, last year where they were doing that switch off between him and Howard and stuff, like, Oh my five touchdowns, like, but yeah, five like touchdowns just, in just like absolutely snaps. <laughs> yeah. Unreal electric kind of player. And we knew that he was bonkers coming in as an like as an athlete, right? Um, but if if he can actually hone in some some passing game, he's going to be, you know, that's a good Davy O'Brien kind of low key. Ooh, uh, okay. Like that's that's really long shot, but just because of the the rushing, like he could be like a twelve hundred plus rushing kind of quarterback. So yeah. I'm I'm gonna throw my sneaky real. I'm talking deep sea fishing, Davy O'Brien. I'm gonna go with Matthew Sluka out of UNLV. Oh my like, gosh, that, that bro, is wait. that is deep sea fishing for sure, man. <laughs> but the numbers he put up at Holy Cross, I know it's totally different. But that system in UNLV, yeah. that what they run with the weapons that they got, they got Thomas in the Just backfield, White outside, chuck it. Ricky he, White's down there somewhere. That's like, what I'm saying. <laughs> and he ran for like 1,300 yards, so like he's yeah. such a threat on the ground as well. People don't know who the heck he is because who's watching Holy Cross football? I had the pressure of watching them when they played. Let alone UNLV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm telling you, I, I just the, the, the vibe I get yeah. out of this kid, he could be one of them sneaky guys who just puts up crazy numbers. And they're like, we yeah. have no choice but to put him in, in, in this, you know, voting. Yeah, he, he'll be. I mean, and when you have Ricky White, who I guess he's older at this point, but he had what, 1,600, 1,700 yards last year or something crazy? Oh, it was close to that. It was, it was, really it was insane. Like, yeah. Just for, uh, you know, G5 production. Right. It was. Crazy, crazy. So I, I was surprised he didn't actually declare. But I think he, maybe he believes in what they got going on out there. We'll have to well, see. I got a nice little Vegas bag to just stick around. Hey, I was gonna. I wasn't gonna say that, but yeah, that's that's probably <laughs> that's what probably happened. what happened. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, like you know, look at Caitlin Clockman. She was gonna make more money staying in Iowa than she would be going to WNBA. I don't even understand it, but it, yeah. it is what it is. All right, Trap. I appreciate you. Uh, before we close it out again, let the viewers at home know where they can find you, work, what you got coming down the pipeline. Sure, at FF underscore Travis M on X. You can find all my written work these days at A to Z sports.com. And really not a lot of uh, fantasy football necessarily, but it is 
I do always think of things through that lens anyway, even if I'm not explicitly stating that in my content, it's just impossible for that not to infiltrate what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, College DeCanton podcast with Stefan Leco. You can find that on Rotoviz Radio and its own uh, channel as well. So, yeah, that's that's about where you can find my stuff these days. But I appreciate you having me on as as, as always, Nino. And uh, it was nice to meet you in person at the Senior Bowl this year. It was. It was great. Yeah. I was just gonna say the thing. I finally got the pleasure of sitting down and talking ball with you face to face. It was it was a blast and a pleasure, and I hope to uh, you know do that again uh, next year and in Mobile and, and for the Senior Bowl again. Absolutely, man. Yeah, and hopefully I won't be so distracted like doing all those freaking cut ups and video edits and. Like, it was like the second was, week or whatever you started the second lot. day or something. If you oh were starting gosh. with a new company, so I everything totally was new. <laughs> everything yeah. was new. It was a freaking hurt. Oh, it was a whirlwind. But <laughs> oh man, thanks again, man. No, no problem. I appreciate you. And again, everybody, have a good night.